Here we have a sheep brain. And just to orient ourselves, this is where his eyes would be. So this is anterior and then towards the back, posterior. And then here's our midline. And then, so here's our medial, and then here's our lateral view. We're gonna take a 360 degree uh, rotation of our brain, looking at the different parts that we can see from the external uh, from the external view, and then we'll go ahead and cut the brain in half to look at a sagittal view and see some of the same structures. So when we take a look at the brain, the first major thing we notice is what we usually think of when we think of the brain, and that's actually the cerebrum. And you can see the cerebrum here. It's divided into a right, and a left hemisphere, separated by this very large fissure called the longitudinal fissure that separates the right side of the brain from the left side of the brain. So here you, again, you have the cerebrum or cerebral hemisphere even, and then over here, the same thing. We actually can divide the cerebrum into uh, four main lobes, named for the bones under which they sit. So again, here's an anterior view, so this would be the frontal lobe, and then the uh, parietal lobe, the occipital lobe at the very back of the cerebrum, and then sitting right under the temporal bone, basically where you might imagine the ears would be, would be the temporal lobe. So again, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and then the temporal lobe. You'll notice there's another structure here towards the back of the brain, so here is our cerebrum, and this is the cerebellum, and sometimes it's called the little brain. Although it's interesting enough, it's smaller in size, but actually is heavily packed with neurons. In fact, 50% of our neurons actually are in our cerebellum, of all the neurons in our brain. So a cerebrum, and then cerebellum. The cerebrum is separated from the cerebellum by a structure called the transverse fissure because it crosses over from the right side to the left side, left side to the right side, so the transverse fissure. So here's our cerebrum, our right uh, cerebral hemisphere and our left cerebral hemisphere. And we know that the sides of our brains want to talk to each other, and so we have a major white matter structure that's going to connect the right side to the left side. And we can see that if we look into the longitudinal fissure. And if you look inside, you can see that kind of white, looks slightly pink because of some remnant blood, and that's called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum. Let me see if I can get a better view of that. You can see that white matter structure there, here, and it runs pretty much from the anterior to the posterior view. We'll see that slightly better when we look at a sagittal view, but there's our corpus callosum, the major weight white matter tract that allows the sides of the cerebrum to, to talk to each other. If we look into our uh, into deep into the brain, we can see parts of what's known as the diencephalon. Right, and part of the midbrain. And so here again, we're, here's our cerebellum, we're just pulling it back. And then you can see these two large lobe looking structures with slightly smaller lobes underneath them. And these are called the colliculi. And there's the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. And they're paired, one on the right and one on the left. Right, the superior colliculi are involved in visual reflexes and the inferior colliculi are involved in auditory reflexes. So orienting your head in space to identify sound and controlling the uh, motion of the eye. So here you have your superior colliculi and your inferior colliculi. Sitting right on top, right on the midline of the superior colliculi is a small gland called the pineal body or the pineal gland. And the pineal body is involved in our circadian rhythm, so our sleep-wake cycle. And its location is interesting in that the superior colliculi are the visual reflexes, and how do we know if it's ready to go to bed? It's because it gets dark out. So again, a type of visual information as well. So here we have our pineal body, which is part of our diencephalon. And then our superior and inferior colliculi are part of our midbrain. So here we can see the view, right, of the cerebrum. And you'll notice that the cerebrum is not smooth, that it has these bumps and valleys all throughout it that helps increase how much brain we can pack into the skull, into the cranial cavity. And these bumps have specific names. The, the bump is called a gyrus, or gyri, uh, plural. 
And then the depression is called a sulcus or a sulci for uh, plural. So the gyrus is the bump and the sulcus is the depression. I remember that because if I'm, if I'm up, if I'm happy, if I'm enthusiastic, I'm gyrating around like I'm dancing. And I remember the sulcus is if I'm depressed, like these are, these are actually depressions in the, in the surface of the brain, if, then I'm sulking. If I'm sulking, I'm depressed. So I remember the gyrus is the bump, the high point, and the sulcus is the low point of the brain. So we're going to rotate our brain. Again, we're anterior, posterior. And then here's a, the superior view. We're looking down on it. And we're going to go ahead and we can see laterally many of these same structures. So again, here you have your cerebrum. If you wanted to divide it into the lobes, you could have our frontal lobe and our temporal lobe. And then here you see the cerebellum. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the inferior view here. So we can look at some of the cranial nerves. There's, remember, there's 12 cranial nerves. And I've removed a structure already from this that would normally sit here. And this is called the pituitary body, the, pituit or the pituitary gland, that sits in the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone. So here's that pituitary gland. And I've just removed it so that I can see the underlying structures. Again, here we're anterior to posterior. And I'm just going to name the structures that we can see from anterior or posterior. Many of them are going to be nerves or tracts. And some of them are going to be other, other structures. So from the anterior, here you see these two, I think of them, they look like little, uh, little flippers almost. These are called the olfactory bulbs. And they're the site where the olfactory nerve first synapses. So this is the first location where the olfactory smell information goes to the brain. These are the olfactory bulbs. And you can see for a sheep, the olfactory bulbs are quite large compared to what they are in, in humans. Information from smell goes from the olfactory bulbs to the temporal lobe. And you can see this white matter structure kind of embedded in the underside of the frontal lobe. And this is called the olfactory tract. And you can see the olfactory tract here as well. And it carries information about smell from the nose to the olfactory bulb to the temporal lobe where olfactory information is processed. So again, here you have the olfactory tracts. You'll notice that on the underside of the brain, the inferior side of the brain, there's a lovely X marks the spot. Okay, this X is actually a specific structure for visual information. So coming into the X from the eyes, which would sit here, this is anterior, and here you have the optic nerves, one from each eye, and visual information is going to cross over at the optic chiasm, which forms the X part of the X, the optic chiasm. So some visual information crosses over from the right side to the left and the left side to the right at the optic chiasm. And then continues on towards the occipital lobe in the optic tracts, which form the other side of the X. So incoming optic nerve, optic chiasm is a crossover point, and then continuing on towards the parts of the brain, like the occipital lobe, are my optic tract here. Again, working our way down, here we have a structure called the hypothalamus the hypothalamus, and you can see it's just posterior to the optic chiasm. So here's the, the hypothalamus. And remember that the pituitary gland actually sat on that, and the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are actually very interrelated structures for the endocrine system. So it makes sense where they would be found. So again, here we have the hypothalamus. You have a small nerve here and there would be a paired one here that's actually been uh, already removed. And this is called the oculomotor nerve, the oculomotor nerve. And it's involved in controlling both intrinsic muscles like pupillary reflexes, but also extrinsic muscles enabling the eye to look up, down, left, and right. The oculomotor. And there would be a paired one here as well, the oculomotor nerve. Major nerves here running up the side here. These are called the trigeminal nerves, the trigeminal nerves. They're muscles for the, for the face. So the trigeminal nerves. Now because we're on the underside here, we can actually see some other parts of the brain called the brain stem. 
And one part is this kind of bulbous looking structure. This is the pons. And then this long, elongated one is called the medulla oblongata. And then here you can see just a small piece of the spinal cord, of the spinal cord. So again, the pons, the medulla oblongata, and the spinal cord. And you can see that the trigeminal nerves pretty much arise from the lateral surface of the pons. Also, much more laterally even, here, you can see another small nerve. It's hard to see. There, there would be paired, but there would be one on the other side as well. But you can see this one here, and this is called the trochlear nerve. The trochlear nerve. Okay, it's also a, a nerve that helps uh, control the eye. So the eye is very important. We actually have multiple nerves that control the eye. So here you can see again the oculomotor and the trochlear. Both are involved in controlling the eye. Here again is that trigeminal nerve, the pons. And then right between the pons and the medulla oblongata is another nerve, paired nerve. You can see one here and another one here. And these are the abducens nerves, also involved in controlling the eye. So the abducens nerves, paired nerves, right at the margin between the, the pons and the medulla oblongata. You can see the optic chiasm and then the hypothalamus. And then here we actually have the midbrain as well. We saw the midbrain from the other view with the superior and inferior colliculus, and here's the other part of it. So here you can see part of the midbrain. You can see that the oculomotor nerve which helps control visual reflexes, right? Which is what the superior colliculus, colliculus does as well. So it makes sense that it would be located here. Taken together, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata all form the brainstem.